How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing. Always protect your profits. We also got to put in the disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice. So just know when you do invest, you're doing it at your own risk. So today we're going to be talking about SOS and E-Bond. They ended up having a strong day inside the market and we're about to go into it. But before we get started, of course, we got to go over the agenda. If you are new to this channel, just want to let you know we have timestamps down below in the description. But if you are a shareholder or you're thinking about investing in either of these plays, I highly suggest you watch the entire video. So the first thing we're going to be going over is a technical analysis for both SOS and EBON. I feel this is key to know about price action. You want to make sure you are not overpaying so you can be able to actually maximize your profits. We also want to know what are certain areas in regards to the price that we need to see that signals an uptrend and a strong move to the upside to make sure that we're not just being faked out here. Then the next thing that we're going to be going over is actually the order flow distribution for both of these stocks. We want to know how much buying and how much selling was actually going down today. I feel this is very key and we're going to be going over it. I didn't add anything from Fintel because there wasn't any significant changes, but hey, we'll look forward to see what that actually looks like for tomorrow. But for the most part, when everything is done in regards to order flow, then I'll be giving you guys my final thoughts. So let's get into it. So we're going to be doing a technical analysis for SOS. So let's see how it performed on the day. So we ended up closing at $3.25, being up 10.88% on the day. On the low, it tested $2.93, and then on the high, testing $3.00 and 35 cents. So before we get started, we want to take a look at how it lines up with our indicators. So it is below the 200 day, it is also below the 100 day, but what we are seeing, it's showing a lot of momentum riding on this 21 day EMA, showing some strength above that $3.10 level. So one thing we want to take a look at as well is the RSI down below. It is right around 58, so we're getting some strong price action and it's showing, hey, looks like SOS is going to be going on an uptrend. So what we want to look for before the end of the week, I want to see SOS get to $3 and this 72 cent area, so catching up right here to the 100 day. If we don't see it this week, then I want to see it next week. We've seen some strength in the market as far as since this week started, and I want to see this continue and being reflected in SOS stock. Do keep in mind areas of resistance. Definitely going to be seeing an area of resistance right here around this 357 level, but once we're able to actually pass it, then we can easily make a strong move getting to around 375 and then making that push to $4. I feel like if it gets close to this area, it will definitely grab a lot of attention and with a lot of increased buying pressure and demand, we could see that $4 level and probably end up seeing a little bit of a momentum above that. Do keep in mind of the fact these areas were pulled back. We saw I hit a low of 293, but if we take a look at some recent lows, it was around $2.80. So is this going to be the floor? Hey, I want to see this hold up. So what we want to see is actually SOS holding up $3 at least at the bare minimum towards the end of this week. If it could hold this area, then it's more likely to get into that $4 range. Now let's take a look at the order flow distribution for SOS. So you can see here as far as on the inflow, we have 13,012 and then on the outflow we have 11,146 so inflow definitely did beat out outflow today so I could tell there is a lot of FOMO buying in here especially since it was able to break that three dollar level and make that move to the upside a lot of people are like hey it is time to load back up in SOS but anyways as far as large orders we had 262 medium we had 9,520 and then small we had 3,200 30. On the outflow side, we had zero for large, and then for medium, we had 7,857, and then for small, we had 3,289. When we take a look at the large scale orders in the last five days, and we're taking a look at May the 26th, which is today, you can see it was at 262, like we confirmed previously. So definitely there was a lot of buying going down for SOS overall in general, and that's why there was no surprise that we were close to almost 
doing 20 million in volume. So I'm going to be looking forward to seeing this actually continue as the week comes to its close, but I'm also going to be looking forward to this being even stronger as we get into June. So we'll just have to wait and see. So we're going to be doing a technical analysis for E-Bond. So let's see how it closed on the day. So it finished the day at $2.99, just shy of $3, being up 12.83% on the day. On the low, it tested $2.62, and then on the high, testing $3.04. Four cents. So before we get started, of course, we want to see how it's lining up with our indicators. So right now it is below the 200 day. It is below the 100 day. But what are we seeing? We're seeing some strong momentum above that 21 day EMA at $2.79. So the fact that we just finished shy of $3, we did test a $3 level in regards to today. So what I'm looking forward is to see this actually continue going into tomorrow. We did pull back to that 260 area, but hey, that's not really a big deal because that looks like it's going to be the bottom for E-Bond. We've already talked about this being at that 260 and that 250. So what we want to see is actually it hold up that $3 level. It's at 299, I'm calling it $3 regardless of the fact. So even though it ended up hitting $3, we know that's also an area of resistance because it hit 304 and then it was met with some selling pressure. So what we want to look for for tomorrow, I want to see a move going in to at least around this 320 area. So in order for us to actually get there, make that move right above 315 going into 320. If we could pass 320, then I'm looking forward to seeing some upside going to the 340s. As far as hitting $4 for this week, that would be great. But hey, if it ends up happening, neither, maybe around probably the beginning of next month, so around June, there's nothing wrong with that either. But if it ends up getting to four before the end of the month, I'm going to let you guys right now, I would be surprised about that, but I do see it actually happening happening in June. If we take a look at the RSI down below over here, it's right around 61, right? So it's close to 70 in regards to overbought, but this is normal, this is fine, because it is on an uptrend and it looks like things are picking back up. Now we're gonna be taking a look at the order flow distribution for Ebon. So you can see here as far as inflow was 8,111 and outflow was 6,671. So on the inflow side, large, we had 1,181, crazy. And also on the medium side, we had 4,728. And on the small side, having 2,202. On the outflow side, we had 303 that were large and then medium, we have 3,873 and then small being at 2,000, 496. When we take a look at the large scale orders in the last five days, you can see as of May the 26th, 878. So institutions are definitely loading up on Ebon when it was at its low. So I was telling you guys this previously when the market does begin to recover and we've also seen cryptocurrency seems to be holding up fairly decently well at the moment, we're gonna be seeing these stocks making some moves to the upside. So what we wanna do is see how this continues as this week comes to a close and then also looking forward to seeing how things look like for next week. But I do see with the market recovery, these stocks have a lot of room to run. This is why I'm not surprised a lot of people were loading up. And also as far as people who were selling off, these could be people again who are actually day trading, so they're doing a lot of momentum plays out of this stock. And also as well, many people are just trading off the fluctuations. Let's get into the final thoughts. So for my final thoughts for SOS and Ebon, it was definitely good to see the run-up that they had in the market today. As the market begins to recover, I could definitely see these two stocks benefiting from this. Also, I wanted to actually take my hat off and congratulate those like myself who averaged down when these stocks were at the prices at where they were. And the part of the reasons being is when you start making those moves back to the upside, you can profit even more. And you also get the smile because you brought your cost basis down. So that's why I always emphasize it's key to have high conviction in these plays. We also know that they are tied to the cryptocurrency space. Space. So as long as there's volatility there, there's going to be volatility in these stocks. Another thing that I want to go over, institutions are loading up on these plays and it is good to see. We also saw there was a lot of FOMO buying when we took a look at the inflow and as well as the outflow. So what we want to do is see how things actually
actually turn out as this week progresses and comes to a close. And it's going to be very interesting in regards to June. If the market continues to show strength like it has been showing since the beginning of this week, things are looking really good. And also before I conclude to this video, whichever player you're in, do keep in mind with SOS, they came out with earnings report, they came out with financials. So if, let's say if Bitcoin ends up running up and if you're a believer like myself that it's going to be getting to 100K and we know SOS is going to be having Bitcoin as far as assets on their balance sheet, this could look really good and you want to look out for those earnings report because they end up looking good and they end up showing actually improvements then Wall Street will definitely end up rewarding it and you'll see some moves. In regards to Ebon, I know it's definitely being impacted with the chip shortage that is going on right now. But outside of that, we know Ebon is also getting into mining Dogecoin and as well as Litecoin. So taking this into consideration and as well as the exchange they have going on and so forth, hey, there's some room for upside and many are actually seeing this. So if you're in any of these plays, make sure you do some more homework and some more due diligence so you have confidence and you can average down on those dips and ride up the movement. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll be talking real soon.